The Bible says, who the Son of Man sets free, they are free indeed. There is real freedom in God. Yet men have to be willing to repent and come to the Lord and believe the gospel. They need to get born again. They need to get filled with the Holy Ghost. And the only way that can happen is those of us that are born again, that have been reconciled to God, that have the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have to come out here and we have to bring this unpopular message to a rebellious, God-hating people. And yes, they're going to get upset. Yes, they're going to get mad at us. Yet we have an obligation to God. We have an obligation to our fellow man. We have to love them. And the Bible shows us that love is an action word. If we love people, we're going to reach out to them. Faith without works is dead. The Bible says faith work it by love. Faith always works by love. And faith has action. And if we love our fellow men, we're going to come out here and tell them, look, you've got to repent. There is mercy that God offers for you. There, there is deliverance in the Lord. Yet you have to be willing to come to Him. You have to be willing to humble yourself. You have to be willing to confess your faults and believe in the gospel and come to Jesus. There's a judgment because of sin. There's a fearful day of judgment where you are going to be judged if you do not come to the Lord and accept his pardon for sin. God is giving men a pardon for sin. Yet we have to go out there and let them know, look, God is giving a pardon for sin. God is giving forgiveness to you if you are willing to come to Him and believe in His Son and confess your faults unto the Lord and, and humble yourself and lay hold of this precious gift of salvation that God is offering through His Son. We have to be willing to go out there and tell them. And the Bible says God gives grace to the humble. Yet how could they humble themselves if there's no Christian to go out there and persuade them? Paul the Apostle said, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. We persuade them, look, there is a judgment because of sin. We persuade them and said, look, the alcohol is going to destroy your life. You're drinking the alcohol because you're empty inside. You're drinking the alcohol because you're hurt and you're broken and you're trying to comfort yourselves with the pollutions of this world and it's giving you temporary relief. It's a temporary fix of feel-good medicine and once it goes away, your life is more emptier than it was before and alcohol, it, it drags you deeper and deeper into emptiness. It destroys marriages. It destroys morality. It destroys and takes away people's livelihood. It steals away their money. And it opens up doors to all kind of other rebellious and wicked things. And we have to tell them this. These people are empty on the inside. They hurt, they are offended, and they need the Lord. Yet they need a Christian who has been born again, who is willing to say, God, here I am. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to preach. I'm going to love these people. God, give me the burden of your heart. We need to have the burden of the Lord. We, have, we need to have the burden of the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to see things how God sees things. When you look out at everybody, most of the people you're looking at is on their way to hell. They don't know God, and we have to have a burden for their soul. We have to have a burning compassion inside of our heart that's going to compel us to take a stand for their salvation, to take a stand and get into their way and say, look, you need to get right with God. You need to get right with the Lord. If you do not repent, you're going to go to hell. It's nothing wrong with that, my friends. Telling the people the truth is not wrong. If you warn them of hell, it's not wrong. 
If you tell them to come to the Lord, that God offers salvation, it's not wrong. If you reprove the drunkenness and the weed smoking and you talk to them and tell them that the pornography is perversion, then you need to come out of that. It's not wrong. You are reproving the darkness. And this is what we are commanded to do. This is how they get convicted of sin. And then God needs Christians to be willing to answer the call and to have his heart to see things the way that he sees things. God sees that the world is hell bent on its way to hell. God sees that most people, they on the broad way that leads to destruction. God sees this and we need to see things as God sees it. We have to have the burden of the Lord. We need to call out to the Lord in prayer and say, God, give us your heart. Give us your burden so that when we go out into the world, we would be burdened. And when we look at these people that are lost, they, they live in rebellious lives. They need somebody to interject God's thoughts about their life and about what's going to happen to them when they die. Because they're not thinking about God. The carnal mind is not thinking about God. It's thinking about worldly things. It's thinking about things of the flesh. And God needs his Christians to go out there and interject God's thoughts in his word into their life to wake them up. God needs us to wake them up, Christian. We need to go out there and we need to bring them the message of wake up and say, look, wake up. Judgment is coming. Wake up. It's appointed once for man to die. And then after that comes the judgment. God is offering mercy, yet you have to be willing to come to Him. Repent and believe the gospel. So let's be faithful to the Lord. Let's be faithful to go out here and warn sinners to repent, to talk to them about the salvation of their soul. Let's be willing to deny ourselves and pick up our crosses and follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's be willing to go and stand in their way and not let them go to hell peacefully. We can't let these people just go to hell peacefully. We have an obligation to God. We have an obligation to them. We have been saved and we are obligated to love our neighbor like we love ourselves. And we can't just let our neighbor go to hell in peace. We have to tell them the truth. So let us stand for the Lord and let us walk in love even though men may not recognize that you love them when you talk to them about their soul. They may not recognize it. But you're not commanded to make sure men love you. You're commanded just to love them. To love them and tell them the truth. To speak the truth in love. And let your motive be that I want to turn these people to Christ. I want them to come to the saving grace of Jesus Christ. And we must have a burden. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Let us be faithful to the Lord and let us speak the truth in love. In Jesus' mighty name.